Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter two talking about test management and continuing ahead with 2.6 defining and using the test matrix and this is the part two of this particular tutorial. In order to further continue and understand more about what exactly this uh, defining and using the test matrix is all about, in previous tutorial we got a basic introduction to what exactly these matrices can be helpful for and what test manager should consider in order to select the right set of matrices and what are the different matrices which are available. As a part of this tutorial we are getting into a deeper dive to understand that what kind of parameters can be measured with help of the matrices and what are the typical matrices which are available in all order to measure something which happens as a part of the testing life cycle. Now the very first thing we are trying to understand here that there are five primary dimensions which can be measured to understand the progress on the project and of course these primary dimensions are covering all the aspects of the old activities which can be performed as a part of the testing life cycle. Now, so the five primary dimensions are a product risk or can be also referred as quality risk, defects, test, coverage and confidence. Of course, to understand that each one of them stand for themselves, that you know, one, one parameter's very important parameter is risk, which has to be monitored uh, from time to time in order to see whether uh, these risks are still existing with the same severity or you have mitigated it to a certain level. Defects, of course, each and every defect has to be uh, captured and uh, monitored in terms of like what number of defects you are finding, how many defects you have resolved, how many defects you have yet to resolve and what what kind of priority and severity of the defects you have and so many things which you'll be learning in upcoming chapters as well. Test, of course, the number of test cases you have created, the test case execution outcomes, the status of it, and the number of test cases which were helpful in order to get good number of defects. Coverage, of course, coverage talks from the point of the overall coverage on the test or overall coverage on the conditions, statement, decision. There are so many things which can be measured from the point of coverage. And of course, the confidence, which basically stands for the tester's confidence. Like this is a virtual kind of thing, but of course, it's yet important to be measured that what kind of confidence does your team have on the product in order to release it? Yeah, so all the five parameters plays a vital role and covers all different segments in one or the other way to be measured as a part of the testing life cycle. Now these risks, these parameters can be often uh, measured and reported in specific ways during the project or any kind of operation which you perform in relation to that. If these measurements are related to defined exit criteria in the test plan, they can provide an objective standard by which to judge completion of the test effort. So now if you see that these matrices are related to your exit criteria, for example, the exit criteria may have certain matrices as well. For example, number of execute number of test cases executed, number of you know the defects have been resolved, number of defects which are still open and priority one. So you know these kind of matrices can be a part of your exit criteria. So if in case they are relevant or related to your exit criteria, then of course that will also add a lot of value to be measured from time to time. Confidence is something which is measurable through surveys or by using coverage as a surrogate metric. However, confidence is often reported subjectively as possible. So this is basically like a kind of a debriefing session or kind of a meeting where you can generally share your experiences, share your confidence. So uh, to the point you don't have any kind of calculation based driven approach, rather you have some kind of discussion based or subjective uh, based uh, metrics, which is like, you know, you call for a meeting and you ask your engineers or test engineers that do you think uh, what kind of coverage we have achieved and based on the matrices what do you think what your confidence level is do you think some more testing would be required to gain better confidence because one of the objective of testing is to gain confidence about the product quality and if the testers itself are not confident about it there's no point releasing the product isn't it now further to add of course we are looking at some of the example matrices here and trying to understand that what kind of matrices can be useful at what point of time so getting started with each parameter and trying to understand that what kind of matrices are available for each of these primary dimensions. So starting with the very one first, that is product risk. What kind of matrices can be used for risk associated measurement 
of the progress that is percentage of risk completely covered by passing the test percentage of risk for which some or all the tests have failed percentage of risk not yet completely tested percentage of risk covered sorted or risk category by risk category percentage of risk identified after the initial quality risk analysis now think team there is no explanation required because each matrix is so straightforward that it tells you what is that it will be measuring so i will there will be so many matrices which will be covering in today's tutorial and the next tutorial as well so there's no point explaining each one of them if i think that there's something which need to be told to you about any matrix i will explain it in more detail but the name here tells you that what exactly this matrix is going to measure so being a test manager you should be aware that what are the possible matrices available and make use of them if you think there's something custom which you can create you can obviously create your own matrix which will be adding a lot of value to your measurement the next matrix category or the primary dimension is of course defects so what kind of matrices do we have for defects measurement on the progress cumulative number of reported versus cumulated number of result that's a very good comparison if you are doing that as a part of your progress you do understand that what kind of num what number of defects you are finding and what number of results or resolving of the defects are happening because these measurements will tell you that what is your turnaround time and how much lag do you have between the number of defects being found and number of defects being resolved because you may have a lot of defect debt in order to resolve the defects at the end of the cycle so keep a track of that mean time between the failure or failure arrival rate that's another matrix which can be measured that what's the duration between two different defects being found as a part of a particular cycle so i find a particular defect today and then i find the next defect tomorrow that has 24 hours of mean time between failures and uh, the second thing could be like you know if every single hour you are finding a defect so that's too huge you know you need to worry a little because you need to do a lot of rework and a lot of followed uh, following that retesting and regression testing breakdown of the number of percentage of defects categorized by different categories number one particular test item or components specific to each component what number of defects you have found root causes source of defect that is like where it was initially introduced test releases uh, in which release phase introduced detected and removed priority and severity and prior reports rejected or duplicated now you, you see that all these factors are one of the fields from the defect report and can definitely help you to measure a lot of things believe me on our team the defect report alone can tell the entire organization's back end that how proficient your process is and what kind of improvement methods do you need so defects are very very vital in order to be measured also to add trends in the lag time from the defect reporting to the resolution which can be definitely in relation to the very first uh, matrix as well and number of defects fixes that introduced new defect that is like of course regression failures that due to fixing a particular defect and something else is now not working well so these are some of the matrices which a test manager can pick from or select in order to measure the parameter defect similarly if you talk about the other option that is the test of course for the test as well you do have a lot of matrices for example total number of tests uh, planned specified that is implemented run passed failed blocked uh, or skipped so this is completely specific to test cases which you have written or the test script which you have executed and you do manage the status of that so what kind of you know status do you have on these matrices regression and confirmation test status including the trends and totals for regression test and confirmation test failures so you know both the things number of confirmation and regression test execution follow that what kind of status does that have whether how many of them passed how many of them failed if they failed what's the number of that because how many you know defect resolutions are not effective so we can talk about it probably like on out of 50 confirmation test um you know 50 out of 50 30 of them are failing that means you know the fixing of the resolution or fixing of the defects are not so effective so we need to talk to the developers in order to tell them that you do try to resolve the issues but things are not working on the other side and we are actually investing a lot of time and waiting for your resolutions to happen so that we can proceed further so sometimes your defects can be uh, probably a blocker as well and uh, you don't want to you know stay for a long time on a particular module you do have 
to test a lot of other things. Hours of testing planned per day versus actual hours achieved. Of course, comparison of the effort, what you're putting. Availability of the test environment, that is the percentage of planned test hours when the test environment is usable by the test team. So number of time or number of hours what you allocate in order to do any particular activity here in this case it is the test environment preparation and availability so all these things can also be measured so this is just not limited okay these are just some of the typical examples of matrices there are many others which you can definitely find specific to each one of them well also to add matrices related to the test coverage you know matrices related to the test coverage measurement includes requirement and design coverage risk coverage environment and configuration coverage or code coverage so these coverages basically stand for that for example if i have a requirement then what number of test cases i have written whether these test cases which i have written is covering all the aspects of the requirement or not similarly if you talk about the design you talk about the risk you talk about the code so what number of test cases you have written and whether these test cases are enough to have 100 percent coverage or what percentage of coverage have you achieved by writing these test cases so you know all these matrices will definitely add a lot of value from time to time to determine that how much coverage you have achieved and what more you can do in order to add more value now it is very important for that the test manager understands how to interpret and use coverage matrices in order to understand and report the test status so now that's a very critical responsibility of the test manager from time to time to keep an eye on making use of several matrices and uh, decide that what kind of uh, matrices will be best applicable and also uh, put it in such a way that it is measurable and uh, it is representative to different stakeholders so if you remember from the previous tutorial we did talk about it and that's what we need to take care of and uh, at any point of time the uh, test manager can determine further measurements of certain specific matrices that if uh, you think like for example coverage measurement then is it just limited to the requirement and code coverage or it's going to do a deeper dive like uh, statement coverage decision coverage or you know the path coverage or condition coverage so there are so many things so a test manager can always get involved in a deeper dive and then select a right set of matrices which would be uh, helpful at any point of time to give you certain outputs in order to make uh, proper decisions uh, to proceed ahead well that's all from the part two of this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.